Good afternoon, friends, Milfordians, countrymen. We're going to call this concert to order, if you don't mind. <laughs> Welcome. My name is uh, Mr. Susan Serpine. <laughs> um, and, well, actually, Paul Serpine, but uh, welcome, everyone. So nice to see so many people here today on a very momentous concert afternoon. Not only the final concert of another successful season of Greater Milford Community Forest, but tonight's, uh, to this afternoon's concert, also celebrates the 50th anniversary of the existence of this course. That's something else, huh? Round of applause. Today's program, Sentimental Journey, is going to take you through decades and decades of choral music as they started out back in the 70s. Um, we have a number of people that the chorus would like to thank and some people to recognize, so if you'll bear with me for just a moment, I've been given a, a crib sheet to read. Uh, first off, uh, the Greater Milford Community Chorus would like to thank uh, the Milford Community School Youth Program, especially Lori Farrell, I don't know if she's here today, and the department is headed by Mr. Jim Lador. Um, They'd also like to thank from that department for their many years of service and the people that um, were the ones that they worked with in production throughout the year, each year. Uh, Mr. Len Morcone, who just recently retired from that position, and Laura Grovochek. Big round of applause. Good night. The Corps would like to acknowledge the support of a number of uh, local cultural councils, um, the Milford Local Cultural Council, Menden, Hopedale, and Bellingham. Each of them gave grants in this past year in support of the Corps concerts, allowing them to hire musicians, buy music, and pay all the expenses that most of us take for granted. We just come to a concert and don't realize that a whole lot of money went into this and that money comes from those cultural councils. Thank you very much to them. We'd also like to thank the crew, the production crew, um, Joel Kahn over here running the soundboard and his wife Carolyn, um, their regular, reliable, loyal fixtures at every production of the Greater Milford Community Forest. Uh, without them, you wouldn't be hearing a great concert today that you're about to enjoy. Also, today's musicians that are performing, the chorus is emeritus accompanist, great musician in his own right, Mr. Wayne Ward on piano. Robert Ward on bass. And Scott Brennan on percussion. Thank you very much, gentlemen. The Sentimental Journey is dedicated to all those that made the journey possible, going back 50 years. To mention a few, past presidents, if you're in the room today, I know I saw at least one. Uh, Mrs. Gail Brown, I saw her somewhere. There, there, you're right. Gail Brown, uh, Jeff Lovell, who's up on stage performing. Jeff. And Linnea Sylvia. Is Linnea in the room with us today? Perhaps not. Probably enjoying a well-deserved vacation somewhere far away. Um, these people that serve on the board of this organization spend countless hours every year, starting in the summer. I get to start hearing the sounds of holiday pops music in August, actually, at my house as they're planning their season. Um, they keep the business aspects of the course going throughout the year. Current president, Susan Serpine, has been focused on attracting new members to the GMCC, creating exciting programs with the music director, and also new outlets for singing, and creating, most importantly, awareness of this cultural gem that exists in our community here, and has been for 50 years. The founder of this chorus, Mr. Donald Thatcher, a long, yes, yes.
you know, as somebody who's had some kind of involvement in creating cultural uh, things in this community in the last couple of decades, I, I look at this day and think of that man that started this. It started out as something else. He was the choral director for a long, long time in the Milford public school system. Pretty much built that choral department. Out of that came this community chorus. And in fact, I might add that the present director that I'll introduce in a minute is a recipient of the benefits of Mr. Donald Thatcher because long after he retired, that choral program was still going through the 90s into the come this century. And uh, those young students there that include our today's conductor, Mark Shibuchi, my own son, all were in that choral department and it was like the golden age of uh, public school music in Milford. Don Thatcher passed away in 2017. This is his legacy. This is his memory. Um, I think that his daughter Sandy is here today. There you are, please. Now, take a bow. And for your thoughts. The chorus dedicates River Song today, which is his favorite. Uh, according to some of those that knew Don, he would program that if he was allowed to at every single concert, probably on both halves of the concert. So that goes out to him today. Um, after Donald Thatcher retired, Mr. Dan Zabinski took the reins and the podium and picked up where Don left off, served as director for 10 years. He brought passion and enthusiasm to Greater Milford Community Chorus, his depth of new musical knowledge, uh, his ability to connect with the members, his love of singing, and the sheer joy, which was evident when you watched him conducting the chorus during his tenure, began the partnership with Flatland Hill Symphony Orchestra and the community chorus that uh, has been going on for the last seven or eight years, starting with Maestro Zabinski, and I know I saw him walking in the room. Dan, where are you? Yes. Two he retired in 2019 to spend more time with his family and friends. Um, and today, we welcome the latest director of the Greater Milford Community Chorus. He's been the director since 2019. Mark Shibuchi, as I mentioned, is a graduate of Milford High School, um, where he performed extensively through a high school career that uh, I would say is notable having experienced and watched him as a student. Um, under his leadership, the rehearsals are centering around clarity, focus, rhythmic precision, power, and the creation of transcendent beauty through song. Members are fortunate in that learning about the human voice and how best to use the instrument is incorporated into weekly, expertly organized rehearsals. So, uh, I'll be up to introduce a couple other tunes during the show, but today I'm just a happy civilian, just uh, enjoying a Sunday afternoon off and able to attend a concert where I don't have to do anything except talk. So, please welcome the director of the Greater Milford Community Chorus, Maestro Mark Shapucci.
We're all going to be here 50 years from now. So mark the date down 50 years from now for the centennial. <laughs> Some of us may uh, not be here, but, uh, <laughs> but that would be something to think about. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we're dedicating several of the selections today to past directors. Uh, the River Song goes out to Don Thatcher later in the program. Also, um, Maestro Zabinski, when they get to come fly with me, that's your tune. So, you, you can stand up and lead them in singing. Um, the chorus asked Mark if he would think of one of the songs um, that he wanted to kind of be his dedication song. Um, and so this next one is what he decided upon. And uh, he wrote a little um, narrative about it that I'm going to read to you. So, so I've given it some thought. And while there are a number of songs in the concert I truly love, probably all of them, I'm going to go with Rainbow Connection for a couple of reasons. I first heard it in the Muppet movie, of course, but then later it was one of the first songs I remember learning in group voice classes and summer performance camps. Later still as an adult, I now teach this song to kids in voice lessons and group voice classes, and hearing them perform it brings me right back to my youth and the beginning of my time as a musician. The lyrics are poignant and poetic and have stuck with me for years. I'm still not 100% sure what they mean per se, but they communicate something profound and well worth thinking about. I've heard it too many times to ignore it. It's something I'm supposed to be. Art.
meant to say this before the numbers, I'll say it now. Uh, we'd like to thank our special guest, Kermit the Frog. <laughs> We're very excited to, he could join us. It's a big get for us as a chorus. <laughs> Thank you, Kermit.
One of the special aspects of the Greater Milford Community Chorus Program is that each each season of their year, um, the fall concert season, and also in the spring season, um, they make available the opportunity to members of the chorus to audition for and do vocal solo selections. Uh, a practice that's not done by every community chorus in the land that you might see, but something that's uh, very valuable and uh, you know educational too. Um, the first of our solo selections today is Where is the Love by Ralph McDonald and William Slayer, which was performed by Roberta Flack and Donnie Hathaway. It was a chart-topping soul song released in 1972. I think, actually, before this chorus existed. Uh, over the years, it's been covered by many, many singers. But this afternoon, it is covered by GMCC members Gina D'Ottavio and Mr. John Goulart. I heard John tell my mother-in-law just a few minutes ago he was dedicating this to her, but I think he's probably dedicated it to a great many people over the years. <laughs> so sit back and enjoy Where is the Love?
Soloist. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> the soloists you're going to hear the next number are Josh Freehan and Carolyn Kahn.
desserts for you to eat. Uh, if I say that, then maybe there will be more for me to take home. Uh, but uh, enjoy coffee, water, the desserts. Also, it's your last chance to buy raffle tickets. They're going to be holding the raffle for all those donated gift baskets of all sorts of beautiful items in there at the end of intermission. So this is last call. Tickets are only a dollar each. So buy 50 each person. And your proceeds help fund this course. Enjoy, we'll be back for the second half in about 20 minutes.
As part of today's special 50th anniversary celebration concert, the chorus always also wanted to extend an opportunity to their longtime accompanist to perform a solo today. Um, they, they wrote me out a little bio thing to say about him. Wayne is going to introduce his own selection for us in a second. Uh, he's been the accompanist since 2010. Uh, he's an accomplished pianist. This, a special addition to the program, he's going to be doing a piece that uh, he's going to announce. Uh, Wayne lives in Holliston um, and has for a very long time, I think. Uh, he's graduated Tufts University, Eastman School of Music. Teaching career began in Dansville Junior High School in Dansville, New York. And uh, in the fall of 1975, Wayne became a member of the faculty at Berkeley College of Music and later promoted to full professor. Uh, 2020 marked his 45th year on the Berkeley fac faculty and he just retired this past year. Um, as a personal relationship, I can tell you um, the chorus is just immensely fortunate to have a musician like Wayne Ward as their longtime accompanist. I met him back in the 1990s. One night I was subbing on a theater gig and the Turtle Lane Theater walked into this pit where there was this guy with an array of electric pianos. We were in a pit under a stage where Wayne, as the pianist and music director of the show, could not see any of the action going on upstairs. He was watching it on closed circuit TV and then telling us all what to do. It was it was a heck of a first sub night for myself, just trying to keep up with him. Um, the kind of man he is, I got talking to him at the end of the night about my background and told him a story about a Broadway show my teacher had been an integral part of many years ago. I came in the next night to go back to work with him and he had a recording of that show. It was something you couldn't find with Ben Franklin in Paris. And I, I still think of that every time I see a Wayne, that little gift you made to me, just a sub coming in on your gig. It was a, and it's been a privilege making music with you. I'll let you tell them what you're going to play. Thanks, everybody, and thanks, Paul. I'm going to play a ballad. It's an African-American spiritual arranged very well by a person named Larry Shackley, who is extremely uh, well represented in the catalog of, of material. The piece is called, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. I'm very happy to have the assistance of Scott on drums and Rob on bass.
26 years ago at a concert held at the Stacy Middle School, back when the chorus was performing there. Um, Jeff Lovell, who I mentioned before, is a past president of the chorus, a longtime member, sang a song, a solo song, to his wife-to-be, Lori. This coming May 17th, Jeff and Lori will celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary. I guess that worked out pretty good, Jeff. <laughs> Must have been the selection. <laughs> I was engaged to be married, and I had invited my wife to come here at Chamber Music Concert where I was doing Bela Bartok's Contrast. She married me anyways, on the condition that we never program Bartok in Clapham Hill again. But, um, the, with the coming anniversary in mind, uh, Jeff would like to start off his celebration of his 25th anniversary year by singing the very same song to Lori once again, um, Red Roses for a Blue Lady. Not because she's blue, but because she is the sweetest gal in town. Jeff Love. Quick note, the soloist you're about to hear in the next number is Allison Flanagan. Thank you. 
As we near the end of today's program, uh, members of the chorus wanted uh, me to officiate over a little presentation. Are we ready with that? Um, somewhere? Um, the chorus members would like to thank the members of their executive board for all their hard work throughout the year and their dedication. The chorus could not run without them, as speaking. They do a lot of work and we appreciate them all very much. So they got a little momentum appreciation um, to Susan Servine, president of the chorus. Those are for me, really, by the way. Yeah, yeah I got those. Um, Susan Bazazzi, vice president. Nora McRae, treasurer. Nora. And Laurel Heskey, the historian and secretary of the chorus. So, And this is me channeling the members of the chorus. We would also like to thank Mark and Wayne for all their work. Without them, we wouldn't sound as wonderful as we do. They work very hard to prepare us for these concerts. Everyone in this group is amazing. We all work together to make this happen. We are the Greater Milford Community Chorus, a community who loves doing what we do. Thank you. And on my part, I say ditto what they said. This is a community cultural asset. This is the definition of community. I stand in this hall many nights in the year, and on the nights I come for the chorus to watch all these people putting this together, organizing everything, 
and they do it for the love of it. They're not being paid to be here. Uh, I have a great many people I have to pay to be in the room here with us, and they're great too, but this is community, and I invite you to be a part of it. Mark? Thank you very much, Paul. I think most of the important things have been said. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna try not to repeat anything too much. I just wanna say thank you for sharing your afternoon with us. It's a glorious day. Uh, thank you for choosing to sit indoors with us for the afternoon. Well, we have still more sunlight, so you can enjoy the day after this. Uh, I just wanna say uh, thank you again. I want to acknowledge uh, another group of people we really could not do this program without is our fan fantastic uh, instrumentalists over here. We have Robert Orr on bass. Scott Brenner on percussion. And we truly could not uh, give enough gratitude to Wayne Ward, our pianist. Uh, with whom it is my absolute and sincere pleasure to work every week at rehearsal. Uh, we have a really wonderful musical time every week working on this music and I, I genuinely enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and last, last bit is obligatory, um, but I, I must invite you to join us, please. I have to say, I say this every concert, and I mean it from the heart. If you love singing, if maybe you used to sing, but it's been a while, if you're interested at all in what we do up here, we are eagerly always looking for new voices of, of any voice type and any level of experience. Uh, we are about to go on our summer hiatus, so, uh, which is nice, right? Uh, we will be back the, the Monday before Labor Day, the Monday before Labor Day. I did not memorize what that calendar date is. You can look it up in a calendar, uh, but it's the Monday before Labor Day, so please consider coming to sing with us. We rehearse at Memorial Hall, which is right down the street from here. Uh, I think that's it. I think I've talked quite enough. Uh, please enjoy the final number.
Hello. We have Carly Alden on the mic. 